today's question will walk through lessor accounting for a finance lease as well as a sales type lease or a manufacturer dealer lease, I should say. So Iceberg Corporation, which uses ASPE, leased equipment it had specifically purchased at a cost of $175,000 for Cruises R Us, the lessee. The term of the lease is six years, beginning January 1st, 2020, with equal rental payments of $33,574 at the beginning of each year. Cruises R Us pays all executory costs directly to third parties. The equipment's fair value at the lease inception is $175,000. The equipment has a useful life of seven years with no residual value. The lease has an implicit rate of 6%, no bargain purchase option, and no transfer of title. Collectability is reasonably assured with no additional cost to be incurred by Iceberg. And it says using tables, financial calculator, Excel functions, calculate the present value of the lease payments and prepare Iceberg's Corporation's January 1st, 2020 journal entries at the inception of the lease. Okay, so let's figure out what we have here. So we are the lessor. So Iceberg Corporation is the lessor. And it, down here, it asks us to prepare Iceberg Corporation's journal entries and the present value of the lease payments. Okay, so let's figure out, so we've got the lease payments here. We've got the cost. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do here is figure out if this is a capital lease or an operating lease. So lessor capital lease criteria. So let's go through the criteria. So the first is a transfer of title. The second is the lease term is greater than 75% of the economic life. And the third is the present value of the lease payments is greater than, oops, 90% of the fair market value of the equipment. So let's see what we've got here. So is there a transfer of title? It says here, no bargain purchase option and no transfer of title. So this is not met. And the lease term greater than 75% of the economic life it says the term of the lease is six years. Do we know what the economic life is? The use, the, Equipment has a useful life of seven years. So seven year term, sorry, six year term, is it six? Six year term, seven year life. Is that right? Yep, six over seven. So if I do the math here, I'm just gonna go six divided by seven. So that's 85, so this is met. And the present value of the lease payments are greater than 90% of the fair, fair market value. Well, as you'll see, the present value of the lease payments are going to equal the cost of the equipment, which is 175000 And the is the present value. And the cost of the equipment, or the fair market value, I should say, of the equipment is 175000 equals 100%. So this is met. So what am I saying here? Well, it says here the equipment's fair value at the lease's inception is 175000 And next, we're going to compute the present value of the lease payments. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the present value of the lease payments, so we've got present value, we're going to calculate. We know N is 6. And we know I is 6%. And that's because let's go up here. So we've got the lease term is six years and the implicit rate is 6%. And the payment we're given, we're told that the payment here is gonna be, whoops, 33,574 each period. 33,574, 33,574. And there's no guaranteed residual value. So here we're going to have a zero fair market value. 
or get zero cash flow at the end of the lease. So if I put these into my financial calculator, and of course I'm gonna need to have my begin mode on because the payments are due at the beginning of the period. So my present value is gonna be $175,000. And that present value is the same as the fair market value of the equipment. And normally when the lessor sets the implicit rate of the lease, the will, if it's a direct finance lease, then the present value will be the cash outflow for the equipment. So the next thing we're asked to do is to record the journal entries at the inception of the lease. So let's do that quickly. So let's go journal entries at the inception of the lease. So we're gonna have debit lease receivable. And this is going to be, what is the lease receivable gonna be? Let's calculate that. Actually, you know what? We need to set up an amortization schedule to get these amounts. So let's do that. So we're going to have date. We're going to have, <clears throat> what are we going to have? We're going to have date. We're going to have lease payment. We're going to have interest. We're going to have uh, investment recovery. And then we're going to have net investment. Okay, so let's fill this schedule out. So we are going to have, so this lease was signed on January 1st, 2020. January 1st, 2020, we're gonna have that two times. So our net investment in this lease is gonna be 175,000. That was the cost of the equipment. And then we're gonna have our lease payments here. So this is where we're gonna have 33,574. And this lease term is for six years. So we're gonna have January 1st, 2021. Okay, so this is gonna be six years. Okay. So we've got our lease payments here. Actually, this one doesn't go here. We're going to have 33,574 here. So we can cut this down. This is going to be our lease payment each period. We're going to have the interest on the lease. Remember that the interest on the lease is going to be zero in that first period. And this is really important to remember because this is only on day one. So we couldn't accrue interest on it. So our investment recovery is gonna be this minus this. And this is going to pull down our net investment. Okay, and then here we're gonna have, this is going to be this times 6%. And we can pull these things down. Okay, just one second. Okay, and then our net investment is gonna pull down the carrying value each period. So let's see what we've got here. Did any of these carrying value here? This one pulled it down, I think, yep. So we can just drag this down. Okay. Six years. 33,574, this is 6%. What did I put as the interest? Yep, the carrying value times 6%. Net recovery. Oh yes, perfect. All we need to do now is get rid of the rounding. and then let's get rid of that. Okay, so the way that I can tell that this lease amortization schedule is working properly is because it's at zero at the end of the term. So now I can pull all the, and all the numbers that I need for my entries from right here from the schedule. So the first entry we're gonna have is the inception of the lease. Actually, we're gonna have 
the purchase of the equipment, first of all. So we're gonna have debit, uh, debit equipment for lessee and credit cash. And we're gonna purchase this equipment for 175,000. So now we have equipment on our balance sheet. And when the lease is signed, I'm gonna record debit lease receivable. Oh, and you know what else I need to do here with the schedule? is you always want to run totals down your schedule because you're actually going to need the totals for your numbers. So let's sum this up and run this across. Okay, so I'm going to have debit lease receivable and my lease receivable is going to be this number from my schedule, 201444. I'm going to have I'm going to take the equipment off. So I'm going to go the equipment that I just recorded right here. Now I've got debit equipment. So I'm going to go credit equipment. For lessee. And I'm going to take this off 175. So now the equipment's washed out. So that just eliminates the first entry. And then I'm going to have unearned interest income, credit unearned interest income, which is a lot, uh, liability. And, and this is actually a contra revenue. It's actually a contra asset. So it's going to be recorded net of the lease receivable. And this is going to be this number, unearned interest income, 26,444. And that's my, uh, my entry upon inception of the lease. So you can see here, the first entry was to buy the equipment. We know that the equipment cost 175,000. That's what was given in the question. Then when we record, this entry simply takes the equipment off our books. We have a debit and a credit here, so it washes it. And then we're gonna have a debit for the lease receivable and the lease receivable total is right here. It's the, just the sum of all the lease payments that we're expecting. There's no residual value in this question. It says there's no residual value, so we're not including anything. We would include the residual value if it was guaranteed or not, also as a payment at the end of the lease. Um, but there's nothing applicable here. And our unearned interest income is just the sum of the interest we're gonna earn over the lease. So we're gonna set this up as unearned interest income. It's really important to remember on day one, we don't accrue any interest on the lease. So we don't start running interest until the end of the next year or the end of the year, I should say, because for December 31st, we would use this line because that's January 1st, 2021. So it's one day different. Okay, so then when we receive our next lease payment, receipt of January of next lease payment, receipt or receipt of the lease payment, our first lease payment, it's gonna be debit cash. And we're gonna get 33,574. And then we're gonna have credit lease receivable. Same amount. And that's what all those journal entries look like. And all these journal entries are essentially on January 1st, 2020. So let's go up to the question and see what else we have to do. So we did this, it said, calculate the present value of the lease payments and prepare Iceberg Corporation's January 1st, 2020 journal entries at the inception of the lease. So that's exactly what we did there. So let's move on to part two. Part two says, assume that instead of costing Iceberg, 175,000, the equipment was manufactured by Iceberg at a cost of 137,500 and the equipment's regular selling price is 175. Prepare Iceberg's January 1st, 2020 journal entries and to record interest. Okay. So now assuming that this is a, a Assuming that this is a manufacturing uh, sales type lease, which is what it's called under ASPE. So, so we've got, we've already gone through the uh, criteria here to figure out if it was a capital lease or not. So none of this criteria is different because nothing in the lease has actually changed. But all that's changed is that now the fair market value of the equipment, the lessor's cost does not equal the fair market value of the equipment. There is profit included, okay? So what's gonna happen now is that none of the calculations in this, this table actually doesn't change. Our amortization table doesn't change at all, but our initial journal entry will change. 
So what's going to happen is upon, so we're still going to have the, we're not going to have the purchase of equipment entry either. So this entry wouldn't exist because we're not purchasing it necessarily in the same way. So upon inception of the lease, we're going to record debit lease receivable. And it's the same amount that we had before, the 201444, right from our amortization schedule. Right here. Okay. And then we're going to have credit sales revenue. And this is going to be for 175,000. Before we were taking the equipment off that we had put, that we had purchased, but now we're actually selling equipment for 175,000. And then we're gonna have unearned interest income. And this is gonna be the exact same amount before 26,444. And that came from our amortization schedule, the sum of all the interest income on the lease. And we're gonna have one additional entry here too. We're gonna to have debit cost of goods sold. And in the question, it said the equipment had a cost of 137,500. 137, we're gonna go credit inventory. Same thing, 137,500, and that was given right in the question. Other than that, once we're caught up to this point, we're back to the exact same journal entries we had before. So when we record our first lease payment, receipt of lease payment, it's gonna be the same thing, debit cash, 33,574, and credit lease receivable. Thirty-three. Forgive my spelling there. Five seventy-four. Okay, and we're still going to record interest income, which is going to be. We're going to record interest income, so we're going to go record interest income. So we're going to record interest income over the life of the lease. So as you can see here, we're going to record this much interest income each year. So in the first, at the end of twenty twenty-one, we're going to go debit unearned interest income. We're going to pull down that liability or contra asset account. And credit interest income. And interest income, of course, is going to go through our income statement as revenue. And this number is going to be straight from our amortization schedule, which is going to be this number right here, 8486, and here 8486. And the nice thing is this lease was signed on January 1st, and we have a December 31st fiscal year, so we don't have to adjust the term of any of the payments. And let's scroll back up to the question. And that concludes this question.